Uh, when you watch the tape from yesterday, like what stands out to you about, you know, second half execution and where that kind of shifted from the first half? I think it's the same message that we, you know, we harped on since the week one and playing complimentary football throughout the whole game, you know, on special teams, defense and offenses as, as a whole. We got to be able to play together as a team and as 11 as one on all three phases of the ball. So, you know, we just got to um, find a way in that second half to create sparks as on a defense and the offense and as a special teams um, positioning so that we can, you know, get the momentum in these games and, you know, take it into the second half and do what we do best. Um, but, you know, it's just it's the little things that we got to execute on. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing that we can't fix. And, you know, and we're all excited for, you know, next week and the opportunity that we get to, you know, be able to correct those mistakes. And what stood out just from the run type? Uh, we we executed in the run game. You know, the changes that we did get, we we had good yardage. You know, we got four um, – we were able to move the chains on runs. We were able to get six, uh, four, five, six yards um, when we were able to run the ball. So then, you know that's that's a great thing going in uh, to this week, and you knowing that we still we're still there, we still have it, and uh, whenever we're called upon for it, we're gonna do it. Thanks, man. Jordan. Hey, Kyron, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Um, Cooper yesterday was talking about when it comes to adjustments going into the second half, it's not just about what the coaches are doing. It's also about how the players are doing different things when they see the teams changing their patterns after understanding first half tendencies. Right. Can, you, can you kind of expand on that from your perspective? Uh, I just think there's always, you know, there's always moving parts in this game. You know, there's never nothing that's ever settled. You know, we always we think one scheme we might be scheming up for a team um, and they come out and totally something different. So, you know, that's just kind of what um, Cooper's saying, being able to um, learn on the fly, be able to move on the fly, kind of, so to speak. Um, so because, like I said, we, we, we don't know what they're going to We have an idea what they're going to do for us, but we don't know what, exactly what they're going to do. Um, so it just I can't speak on what, you know, what, where Coop was coming from his perspective, but I just know as as a player um, and as a running back, you know, we got we always got to move on the fly we always got to react because we don't know when there's going to bring pressure you know we have a tendency they have tendencies but there's never anything that tells you 100 percent definite that they're going to send pressure or this is going to be a great rundown for them or they're in a different they're like a, a nickel defense or something like that so um just for us as a running back we always got to be able to um, react on the fly and move on the fly so um that's just something you know we always got to just keep on growing and keep on learning each game and be able to pick up on those things what type of communication does that take, not just at halftime in the locker room, but like throughout the entire course of, of the game? Yeah, it just takes little one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's, it's, it's really basically asking, you know, the next person next to you, what do you see out there? Like if Ronnie was out there and he he, he had a good couple of runs, I would come up to the sideline, but what'd you see? What'd you feel? Um, how are they attacking you? What you know? How how are they coming down to tackle you? All that type of stuff. So it's basically just having those short little conversations on the sideline that keeps you locked in in the game and keeps you going. And I'll uh, and keep you sharp too. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Stu. Hey, Karen. Appreciate you making time this afternoon. Thanks for yes, doing sir. this. What do you like the most about, especially some of the gap uh, concepts that you guys are doing in the run game, um, and the way that maybe helps you or you know uh, allows you to utilize your full skill set? Yeah, so, like yeah. I said, I just like you said, I like runs. I like well, I just like having the ball in my hand. I ain't gonna lie to you, but just having the the scap scheme runs is being able just to be able to do what I do best and have my shoulder square to the line, patience, and see everything that's in front of me. And then I get to pick and choose which hole I get to. Um, that's just you know that's something what I think I feel as if I do best. You know, I just being able to be patient, having great vision, and you know explosion to get through those holes uh, that my offensive line creates. And then kind of along those lines, what do you notice about? Uh, maybe the the effect that has as far as sort of the downhill nature of those blocks, obviously, as far as what it does for the offensive line throughout the game. Yeah, I think it, well, it sets the demeanor, first of all. You know, when we have those downhill runs, we got them two double teams working up to those linebackers. It sets the demeanor. It sets the demeanor that you got to come off the ball, you got to smack them in the mouth, and you got to, you know, do what you got to do to get those those grimy yards. But it also sets up the pass. You know, we, I know Coach McVay really harps on – the run everything looks the same, you know. But when we're running that ball, when we get those two things, two double teams downhill, it you don't know what's gonna come. You don't know it could be a run, it could be um a pass. And we've been so efficient in the run that I can I can imagine that defensive coordinators, you know, they're are not defensive coordinators, but the linebackers, they they don't know what you know what's in front of them, what's happening. Thank you. Gary. Hey Kyron. How you um, doing? So how are you holding up? I mean Physically, not that you're broken down or anything, but now being in, you know, every game back where you're getting a lot of carries, how, how are you kind of handling that physically week to week? I'm good. 
this is this is what I asked for. You know, this is this is what I worked my butt off for. This is what I worked for everything for. So you know, it is it's nothing nothing's changed because of this. But um, I'm doing the still same things regardless of treatment or just being able to be in the building. You know, just keeping my body fresh. Um, regardless of how many carries I did have or how many plays I did snaps, whatever it doesn't matter. I'm every day after practice, we're at, we're in here doing something. You just just maintenance work. That's what I like to call it. Just keeping up on keeping the tires fresh. You know, so to speak. Uh, but just you know, staying on top of the things for sure. And I, I, I was asking Russ this, you know, you're a second year guy, but you've got, you know, the mileage of last year and, and now this year under your belt. In terms of mentoring the rookies, the first year guys, um, do you find yourself doing that a lot? Either guys coming to you or you imparting kind of lessons that you learn? Uh, Yeah, I just kind of, you know, kind of just speak game to the young guys, kind of just let them um show them the perspective that I went through. Like for me, I, I, you guys obviously know I I didn't play much last year because of injuries and you know having being off the field and so just having a one on one like right now with JT Jason Taylor I can really relate to him and what he's going through because you know I was in his position I always talk to him all, every day I just try to check in to see how he's go, how he's doing because you know being on the IR is, is different from being on the team you know you're all you're just in the training room really you're just working on your body you're not really around the guys or you know in the locker room as much so I just try to you know um, just. Check up on check up on JT, see how he's doing, check, see where his mind's at, and just tell him that you know it's all gonna you know, be all over soon. You know he's got to keep on working, but you know just I try to mentor a lot of people, you know, just because of what what I went through and how I felt.